I'm the weakest link really. It's amazing how much harder everything is when your whole world <laughs> sways from side to side. Pasky day two, heavy hands. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For the last four years, we have been sailing around our island continent and sharing our experiences with you. <laughs> yes, look at that. Sensation. After nine months of hard work, we have just completed an extensive refit of our 50-year-old 30-foot fiberglass sailboat in Tasmania. Now we have a short weather window to close the loop and sail the 2,000 nautical miles home to Western Australia before the westerly winds of autumn return. To join us each week in a race against time to reunite with our families, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. With a high predicted to come into the bite and give us strong easterly winds for our westerly passage, we departed Coffin Bay at high tide and had a fast overnight sail to Flinders Island. We spent a day waiting for the stronger winds at the front edge of the high to pass and used the time to put some provisions on board. With the fridge stocked the old-fashioned way and the wind bending to the east, it was time to depart Flinders Island. In order to exit the shoals around the island, we sailed on a ridge, but you can see here that we had the head sail pole already guyed out, ready for when we changed course. Well, we're day two, we're underway. We look set to be making 150 miles in 24 hours, which is whoa. which is pretty good. Pesky says, whoa. Um, a, a small frustration this morning was that this camera that I'm talking to now, it seems to have like um, formatted a whole bunch of information. That means uh, day one, as <laughs> we were heading out with a dolphin escort, that's, um, that's gone and we also just recorded a little bit about eating some seafood that we caught but I'm, I'm sure you've seen all that but anyway we're um we're trucking along we're still wing on wing we've 
got two reefs in the mainsail at the moment and one reef in the headsail just to balance things up. The wind's just directly behind us, like it's coming straight up from behind. Um, but we've been making a really, really steady 6.4 knots um, and that's why we're, it looks like we're doing 150 miler. So it's not bad for a 30 footer, you know, 150 miles in a day. We, we, we were um, just sort of 120 miles in a day, but ah, waves throwing us around a bit. But it looks like, um, you know, it looks like we're going to set a record for Moral. Does the galley work? I'm the weakest link, really. Oh, look at that stove gimbling beautifully. Oh, I spilled some. 7.4 knots. Oh. Look at that. She's holding between 6 and 7 knots fairly consistently. <laughs> so we're getting along out here at the moment, and the seas that are, um, the seas that are following us at the moment they've they've mellowed out a bit before we had them a little bit harder on the the port quarter and they were about three meters um, this morning we've lost a bit of height in them you know like it's about one and a half to two meters every now and then we'll get a set that comes through that's a little bit closer to three so everything's pretty relaxed out here now it's all right you know like that's a that's a pretty moderate sea for out here in the bite um, the star of the show has absolutely been the wind vane like it's um we pretty much, every now and then we'll just go and have to tweak it every few hours or something like that. But mostly we've been letting the wind vane do its thing and we just sort of make minor adjustments to the sail trim. And that's pretty much it, you know, like as the wind boosts we just sort of reef down as the boat feels a bit more overpowered. And as the wind vane starts to get overwhelmed all it means is we just pull a little bit more off that head sail. So it's been fairly fairly steady passage making, you know, and uh, we haven't really had to work for our miles as hard as we normally do. The only thing is, it is in a following sea on the quarter, so it is a little bit roly-poly. That's a boat, I guess. There's our reefed head sail. You okay, baby? It's the only sensible option. It's amazing how much harder everything is when your whole world <laughs> sways from side to side. Pasky day two, heavy hands. I just made my tea. You know the problem with spilling tea before you've had tea? You have to clean it up and you haven't had any tea yet. So we've slowed down now with our um, with our average speed. <clears throat> it's dropped below dropped below six knots for a little while, but it'll come back. What? Outrageous. Couple of big waves growing out the back. So Troy and I were just having a chat um, and we were saying that we're not <laughs> massive fans of passage making. I mean, it's uncomfortable, it's really hard to eat, it's really hard to sleep. Um, Perhaps it's easier in a slightly larger boat, I don't know. Uh, I'm just feeling a bit a bit down this morning. I, um, I've got an ear infection, but luckily I've got some antibiotic drops to put in. So it seems like, I mean, I've got away with it before, going diving and not putting aqua ear, so put, putting some alcohol in my ears afterwards to get all the water out. 
Um, I've gotten away with it before, but I didn't get away with it this time when we went in at Flinders Island and I got some abalone with Troy. Um, must have been some water in my ear and now I've got an ear infection. So thankfully I have those drops because I couldn't imagine going through what I went through at Ashmore Reef again during this passage. Um, yeah, there's, it's too hard to prepare food and heat up food. Um, yeah, I thought <laughs> since we're sort of sailing downwind then, <laughs> It would be a bit easier, but I pull it wrong. Anyway, it's slightly more comfortable than what it was before. Um, Troy's put the smaller wind vane on, um, so now we're not getting thrown around quite so much. And he's been on up on deck getting some footage of how um, we're all trundling along. We're making amazing speed. Um, we'll be making a 150 mile day today, so that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, that's a silver lining, I guess. We'll be there a lot quicker than we, we planned. We planned for four and a bit days. I think we're going to be there in three and a half, so that's pretty cool. If we keep going at this speed. Very strange down here, mm. these waves. Wind vane's pointing that way, and that's pointing that way. Probably time for mechanical. Oh, yeah, right, right. We want to steer like this, but you can see it's really crazy. Like the, each wave is just making the wind veer and back. I can't do it by myself. Yep, I'll go put my clothes on to do the tiller. Well, my morale has improved compared to what it was this morning. I am enjoying passage making again. Um, I don't know, you just get these ups and downs. You have a, a really rough few hours sleep. The wind steering was not doing very well. I think we're getting some really dirty air off these confused seas. So the seas are really, really moderate for crossing the bite. Often you can experience quite significant swells and seas on top of that here. but. It's very, very moderate, the seas, but they're very, very messy. They're not consistent. They're not coming from any particular place. And I think that was really overwhelming, the wind steering. 
So we've opted now to um, put the electronic, put the electronic pilot back on on the um, on the foil on the wind steering, and um, it's doing a really great job. It's holding us on course, and the sails are really balanced. So it's a really smooth ride now, thankfully. And my ears are hurting less because the antibiotics, um, the topical drops, are working really well. And I've had some chocolate. I've had lots of cups of tea. I hadn't had enough cups of tea this morning because it was so bumpy it was so hard to do anything it was very frustrating so it's a lot better now and I'm sitting been sitting in the cockpit and the sun was shaded by the sails so not in the blazing sun so it's it's really wonderful um, yeah we've got like 300 more miles of 270 degrees we're heading west and we're heading home hello Mr Albatross hello Ooh la la, it's duck confit. Ooh la la, it's a duck confit. It's a, they're a little bit, it's a, it was a little duck. So I think it's entree size portions. I thought it was a bit bigger when I made it four weeks ago, but I guess my memories failed me. So duck confit is a great store to have in your fridge because it's duck simmered in duck fat and it lasts for a really long time. I did it in our shuttle chef. I brought it to the boil in its own, in duck fat and then put it, uh, left it in the shuttle chef for a few hours to cook. And then I just put it in the fridge and I brought it out for our passage. I saved it for our passage and fried it up in its own fat. And now we have crispy little duck thighs. Don't try this at home in 20 knots without a gimbal stove. Yep, gimbal stove. Got my fowlies on for spitting fat. And uh, yeah, we're going to be able to tuck in in a minute. Oh, wow. It's yummy. It needs a bit of salt. Sure. Oh, that's really good. I was worried it was going to be a bit firm, a bit tough, but it's not tough at all. That confit wasn't enough. Now we're frying up some abalone in the duck fat. And we've got some fish fillets here too. So, blue groper abalone. Yep. In duck fat. After an entree of duck confit. Yeah, we're just having complete carnival right now. I reckon you've got to slice it thinner, eh? It'll probably be alright, but we might get some tough bits. I can't slice it thinner in the seaway. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Join us for the second half of our passage next time when we return to West Australian waters with more strong wind sailing. Three hours of white knuckle terror on the tiller. Well, time flies when the boat flies. Until then, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, thanks for giving it a thumbs up. We look forward to seeing you next time.